So ASCO 2021 was filled with really incredible results for, for our patients with gynecologic malignancies, especially for patients with upfront ovarian cancer. We saw three really exciting abstracts get presented during the gynecologic oral session. The first was Dr. Isabel Ray Cocard, who presented the Neo Pembrov study, which was a randomized phase two study in advanced high-grade serous ovarian cancers who were thought not suitable for primary debulking. And what she wanted to look at was, was the addition of pembrolizumab to standard chemotherapy, could that improve complete resection rate at interval tumor reductive surgery? So patients received four cycles of carboplatin, paclitaxel, with or without pembrolizumab. They did allow optional bevacizumab, and I will tell you that the majority of patients on this trial received that agent. But their goal, again, was looking at that complete resection rate. So what did they find? They actually found that in the arm that received the chemo plus the BEV plus the pembrolizumab, there were higher rates of complete resection, 73.8% um, versus 53.5%. So that was very intriguing. However, we did see that there was increased toxicities as well, specifically looking at grade three toxicities. And the addition of the pembrolizumab did not yield a benefit in progression-free survival. Now, is this a surprise? Not really. You know, we've seen this in some of the other trials that have combined immune oncology agents with chemotherapy. Um, you know, the Imagine 50 trial showed something similar. So I think the bottom line for this trial is we need to tease out more who truly benefits from the addition of immune oncology agents. And, and this trial does have planned translational objectives that will hopefully help us answer that. Now, along the lines of more is not always better, uh, Dr. Pisterer from the AGO presented the AGO OVAR-17 boost trial, which was really looking at a question we've all been wondering. In patients with upfront ovarian cancer who are receiving bevacizumab maintenance is more better. So should you go for 22 cycles or should you actually extend out to 44 cycles? So they took these patients and they randomized them to that exact question to try to see if they could improve progression-free survival in this patient population. And bottom line, they did not. There was no improvement in progression-free survival um, in between those two groups. So more is not better. You know, bottom line for this trial, really important question. We've all been wondering the answer to this. So I'm really glad they did it. Uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't seem to have made a difference. So you can stick with your 22 uh, cycles of bevacizumab. And then finally, Dr. Riccone and colleagues presented the results of the VITAL study. Now, the VITAL study was looking at an autologous tumor vaccine that's specific to each patient, and it's called GEMOGENOVATUZEL. I know I brutalized that, but you would too. But he called it GEM for the rest of his study or study presentation. Now, what's cool about this is, again, patients have their tumor harvested at the time of surgery, and there's a vaccine that's created. And then they were randomized after having complete response to their upfront surgery and chemotherapy. Now, this vaccine was very well tolerated. The patients did, they felt good on this. They did not have a lot of side effects. However, in the all-comer population, we did not see the addition of the, the GEM vaccine provide an improvement in progression-free survival for all comers. However, they did have a planned subset analysis for patients with homologous recombination proficient tumors. We all know this is an area of huge unmet need. And intriguingly, they found an improvement in both recurrent free as well as overall survival for those patients that were treated with the GEM vaccine and had a homologous recombination proficient tumor. So this is a small study. It wasn't um, powered to look at this very question of homologous recombination proficiency, but we'll be very excited to see hopefully a larger study in this patient population.